Am I up there? Am I recording? Oh, no, I, I should be recording. All right, are you ready? <laughs> All right, I'm on the right here. So we have <laughs> Oh, I did. Oh, dang. <laughs> I didn't think we went that high. Good job. Are you 29? Yeah. Yeah, it happens. You get yeah. it. I, I, All right. Good thing I, mean, I got you. <laughs> All right, so I got four is our number. Because on there is different names. It depends if you want your answers to count or not. <laughs> All right, so we got six more. I know. Okay, make sure you made a pick. There's three of you missing. Did he respond to it? Either that or I can't count. <laughs> Are we in 31? <laughs> yes, our channel 31. Always. Always. Oh, yeah, always. Because that's my little bill. You know, it's just like my age, 31. All right, it says 24. Okay. 25? 29 minus 5 is 24. Is it not? Is it because, oh, I clicked, because I clicked both. Oh, okay. All right, so I'll have a random one in there later. That's okay. No problem. Okay, oh, I got two answers. Well, four, but two main ones. Okay, so... First of all, what is a Bronsted Lowry base? A proton acceptor. Okay, so if you look at this reaction, who is accepting the proton? Yes. What is this in this reaction? That is the the acid. Yes. Okay. Things that have NHs in them and things that have OHs in them can be either acids or bases. Okay, how do you know which one? So, so don't just say, oh, that was a bronsted lowry base in the last example. It doesn't work like that. You have to th look at the whole thing and see what's happening and, like, analyze it. Okay? Yeah, I'm just trying to get back to there. Okay, now we alluded to the position of equilibrium, but we hadn't really talked about it yet. The equilibrium of an acid-base reaction favors the reaction of the stronger acid and formation of the weaker acid. Okay? Stronger to weaker. Okay, so strong reacts to form weak. Okay? The beating up on the weak guys. Compare the pKa values to decide. So here is two things. This is acetic acid and ammonia. Okay? Can you tell me what you will get from this reaction? What will be your product? What do you think? Well, what is this? Acetic who? Acid. Okay, can you tell me which proton is the acidic one? The one on the oxygen. The one on the oxygen, the one that is yellow, highlighted in this example. They will not be highlighted on the test. <laughs> Why? Can you see that? Huh? Oh, sorry. Oh, you were, she, you were wondering if he could see it? Yeah. Yeah, can you see that? Yeah. That's <laughs> my favorite color. 
Okay, because you can see it? Yeah. Okay, good to know. <laughs> okay, so that's your acidic proton. So what is NH3 going to be then? Your proton acceptor. Okay, so what will you get for your products? NH4. NH2? Four. Four, okay, and what happens to this? That minus the hydrogen. Yeah, that minus the hydrogen, okay, and then you need some what? some charges, right? Okay. Now, I didn't put the arrows in yet because we're going to try to figure out which side does the equilibrium lie on? The left side or the right side? Strong reacts to form weak. So here is the pKa of acetic acid, 4.8. Okay, you might not have known that. That's okay. And over here is the pKa of the conjugate acid. Notice we're not trying to find the pKa of acetate anion, okay? It's the conjugate acid. So you have an acid and a base on both sides. So which one is the stronger acid? What? Okay, so what does pKa mean? pKa means... Right, negative log of the Ka, okay? And you remember we said the lower the number, the stronger, stronger the, acid. the acid. So which one is the stronger acid? Acetic. Acetic acid is the stronger acid. Do you see how we got that? 4.8 is less than 9.4, okay? So that means that the equilibrium lies to the right or to the left? Strong reacts to form weak. It's going to lie to the right. Yes. So your arrow will be bigger on the top to show that it's going to the right. Okay. So wasn't there a problem where you had to do that? Pick the arrows or something somebody said? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The easiest way to do that right now is to actually look up the PKAs. Okay? In your book, there's a table on page 71 that you can use. Now, you won't be able to use the table on the test, but that's okay. You won't need it. But look at, that will help you start learning who's more acidic, who's less acidic. Okay? Because in the end, you're going you're gonna to have a little ranking in your brain. Kind of. Okay? You might not know between two oddball things, but you'll know between other things, okay, the things that we're going to be using. So keeping track of that table, that'll help you. It was a, it was a good table. I looked in your book and looked for it uh, this morning to make sure, okay? That's, that's it. That's all you do. You look at the PKAs, okay? Okay. Oh, I must have hit something weird down there. Okay, how structure affects acid strength. Some of these things um, have to do with inorganic things, so we're not going to go like a whole lot over them, but we're going to talk about them a little bit. The strength of the bond to the atom from which the proton is lost or the electronegativity of the atom from which the proton is lost. Okay, so yeah, look at those two things. And then the third thing is changes in electron delocalization on ionization. And we talked about that one already when we talked about acetic acid versus an alcohol, right? And we did, we, why is an acetic acid more acidic than an alcohol, okay? And the big reason was delocalization, okay? Resonance forms is what that is, resonance. Your book really liked that term, delocalization. All right, so what about the other two? Okay, so bond strength is, bond strength decreases in a group going down the periodic table. If you're going down the periodic table, bond strength decreases. In general, bond strength is most important when considering protons bonded to atoms in the same group in the periodic table. So did you talk about the halogens? So you've got HF and HI. Which one is the stronger acid? Do you know? It's HI. 
okay? Everybody wants to say HF because it's a, the more electronegative. When you're looking down the periodic table, down a column, bond strength is decreasing. So it's easier for HI to give off that proton. Now, what are some reasons why the bond strength is decreasing? Like, look at I and F. What's different about them? Hmm? Their size, right? I is much bigger than F, okay? And so because it's bigger, the bond is going to be longer. So it's not going to be as strong. Okay, you look at H2S versus H2O, okay? H2O is water. H2S is hydrogen sulfide. It's the stuff that stinks in rotten eggs. That's literally what it is. It's H2S that you're smelling. If you have ever in your life cracked an egg, man, it'd be bad. Okay, I mean, it's happened to me a couple times in my life. You know, all 20 years of it. All right, so, <laughs> so H2S is stronger than H2O. S is below O on the periodic table. Okay. All right, so here are the halogens. Okay. HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. As you go down the periodic table, the atoms are getting bigger. This is supposed to kind of show you that they're getting bigger. It's not perfect. Okay. Here are the pKa's. Look at that. HI is negative 10.4. Okay. But look at those pKa values. Do I have these pKa values memorized? No. I do not. Okay, there's enough numbers in my brain. Okay, you probably already feel that way. Well, but I know this one is more acidic than this one, than this one, than this one. Okay, and that's what you need to know. Who's more acidic? Okay, if you need the pKa number, you can always look it up. So of these, HF is the weakest acid, and HI is the strongest acid. Now, we're not saying HF isn't a strong acid. We're looking relative. Okay, it's just like when that cold front comes in. It's relative. In the summer, a cold front means something very different than in the winter, right? Okay, it's relative. This is weakest of these four. Okay, and you notice that we don't even mess with astatine. Okay, we're only, when we talk about the halogens, astatine kind of gets knocked out. And there's a new one under there, too. I know absolutely nothing about it except it barely exists. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, what about that electronegativity, okay? So as you go across the periodic table, electronegativity becomes important, okay? So carbon is the least negative and fluorine is the most negative. So now look at the relative acidities when attached to those atoms, okay? HF is much the strongest acid of those four. Okay, then water, then ammonia, and CH4, you probably should not even think of it as being acidic. Okay, because it's all nonpolar bonds. Make sense? Okay, so if you're looking at relative acidities, okay, please, that's most. Okay, and then stabilities, these are the different anions, or as we put it, the conjugate bases of each of these four acids. See how I did that? Okay, so CH4, CH3 minus, that's the conjugate base for that. NH3, the conjugate base for it is NH2 minus. Now, is anybody going, wait a minute, I thought NH3 was a base. It can be either an acid or a base. Depends on the other thing. Same thing with water. It can function as an acid or a base, okay? But the conjugate base for water, because we're looking at the acidities of those specific protons, is going to be OH minus. The conjugate base of HF is F minus, okay? So of those, who's the most stable? Fluoride ion. Okay, now do you remember saying that if you have a strong acid, 
the conjugate base is strong or weak? Weak. weak. Do you remember that? And if you have a weak acid, the conjugate base is strong. strong. So now I'm asking you a different question, okay? So look at these anions up here. Tell me who is the strongest base of those anions. Yes, CH3 minus is the strongest base because this is the weakest acid by like a ton, okay? See how we figured that out? Because if I, asked, if I just gave you these, they were all mixed up, and I said, put them in order. You, which one was the strongest? You might be confused. You, everybody wants to pick OH minus as being the strongest. It's only number two on this list, okay? This is the strongest, okay? And this may be something you have never seen before, okay? Doesn't matter. You know that this is the weakest acid, so that's got to be the strongest conjugate base, okay? Kind of think it in a little. We'll keep practicing that. I think. Okay. So here are the your CH four and ammonia. What else have I got on this little picture? Do you have this slide? Yeah. Do you have all the pictures? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. So here are the actual pKa numbers. Okay. So notice that CH4 has a pKa of 60. That's huge compared when you look at it, pKa's. Okay? Ammonia is 36. You're looking at losing one of those three protons. Okay? Water is 15-ish. We already kind of talked about that, and HF is 3. So look at that range. It's huge. Okay? So this is the weakest acid, and this side is the strongest acid. Do you have that thing, the little arrow? Okay. Do you have it in pretty colors? Okay. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Now, let's look at carbon atoms. Okay, so if a carbon atom is sp hybridized, what does that carbon have bonded to it, you think? Like if I say sp hybridized carbon, does that put anything in your brain? Two things. What? Triple bond. A triple bond. Usually it's a triple bond. You could have the two double bond thing, but usually it's a triple bond. Okay, sp2, you'll have a double bond, and sp3 will be all single bonds. Okay. Okay, so here is a triple bond. Okay? The carbon of a triple bond that's sp hybridized is more electronegative than the carbon of an sp3 hybridized carbon. Okay? This one is more electronegative. Now, we're not talking big numbers like fluorine. Okay? They're little. Okay? Why? Or let me get them all up there. Okay. All right. Are you done? Okay. Who makes these slides anyways? Okay. So. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So here's acetylene. And this carbon right here. Oh, let me get a pen. This carbon is the one that's sp hybridized. Okay. So what's the difference between an sp and sp2 and an sp3 hybridized orbital? the amount of S and P character changes, right? Remember we talked about that when we did that last week? Okay, it was only last week. All right, so an SP3 orbital will have two lobes. It's a little bit roundy, okay? An SP2 orbital is going to have... Two lobes also, but this lobe on the top, the bigger one, is going to be shorter and squattier than the other one. The bottom one probably is too, but it's little. Okay, so the SP is going to be more like that. So because as we go from SP3 to SP2 to SP, you have more S character, the actual hybrid orbitals look more like circles. Okay, because this one was 
50-50, right? 50% S, 50% P. This one was 33-66, because I'm not going to worry about that third. Okay, and this one was 25-75. So the amount of S character is different in each one of those. Okay, so because this hybrid orbital is shorter and squattier, the electrons are closer to the nucleus. That makes this proton easier to remove than this one or this one. Okay, now no one's saying that they're all real easy, but you'll see here. Okay, so here's a PKA. Remember that this one was 60? Okay, CH4, there's not much difference between CH4 and C2H. Okay, so the pKa's are around 60. Look what happens. We go to ethylene, the pKa is 44, and acetylene is 25. Okay, this means... Wow. Okay, all right, I guess I can do that. I wanted to circle it. Okay, I wanted to circle it because... You can have bases that will remove those protons, okay? Because the pKa is only 25. I'm not saying that you're going to take acetylene and try to dissolve it in water and you're going to get little protons running around in the solution. But you can have a strong base that will remove that proton. And we're actually going to use that to make some sub, okay? In class, we're not going to play with acetylene. I don't think, unless Jonathan has, Jay-Z has stuff for you. Okay, bond strength is more important when comparing acids in which the proton that is lost is bonded to atoms in the same group in the periodic table. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine was an example we used. Electronegativity is more important when you look across the periodic table in the same row. Okay? That's like the whole thing. <laughs> it's called a summary slide. Okay. pH, pKa, and protonation. All right. Whether a given acid will lose a proton in an aqueous solution depends on the pKa of the acid and the pH of the solution. Does that kind of make sense? You can see that? Okay, even if you don't know what to do. Okay, a compound will exist in its acidic form if the pH of the solution is less than the compound's pKa. Okay, pH of the solution. Let's see if I can actually underline that. pH of the solution is less than the pKa. It will be in the acidic form. Remember, acid, conjugate base. Okay, we're going to practice that. A compound will exist in its basic form if the pH of the solution is greater than the compound's pKa. Okay, so this one was acidic. This one is basic pH of the solution is greater than the pKa. All right, so you're going to have to keep that in mind, and we're going to do some examples. Okay. Everybody got that written down, highlighted, little stars, all that good stuff? Okay, whatever you do. Okay. Write the form in which the following compound will predominate in a solution of pH 5.5. All right, so here's the first compound. Oh, I gave you a hint. Okay, but you already knew that, right? Maybe, okay. All right, so here is a compound. The pKa is 15.9. All right. That's the pKa of what proton on that molecule? Which proton? There are six hydrogens on there. I want to make sure we all got the same acidic one. The H on the? On the OH. Right. This is the acidic proton. That's the pKa of that. 
Okay, now I want you to tell me what is, if this is the acid, over here we're going to write the conjugate base. Okay, it's going to be this little column over here. All right, so what's the conjugate base of that? What are we going to do to get that? We're going to take that acidic proton and we're going to fill it up. Okay, so what do we get? CH3. CH2O minus. Very good. Wow, you can't even see my little dot. All right, I'll try the pen. He doesn't like me most days. See? Looks, looks like chicken scratch. All right, so that's my conjugate base. First of all, do you see how you get that? Okay, your answer over there is going to be either this or this. Okay, there's no other answers, okay? You've got your acid and your conjugate base. So we're going to decide which form will predominate in a solution of 5.5 pH, okay? So we're going to compare the pH to the pKa. And what have we got? Is it more or less? Less. So what is going to be the form that's going to predominate? Okay, so what do I write over here? C3H2O. Yes. Okay, so you follow the process? All right, we're going to do it again. You probably have the questions already on your dough. Look at that. I had a feeling it was going to do that. All right, so here's this one. Ooh. Daddy already has a charge on it. Don't freak out. Tell me what the acidic proton is in that substance. What is the acidic? What do you think it is? The acidic proton. There's now seven to pick from. Hmm? One of the two bonds are Yes, and it doesn't matter which one. Okay? So these are acidic. But you all know that after you take one off, then to take the next one off is harder, right? You learned that when you did, like, phosphoric acid? Okay, good. All right, so I want you to tell me what the conjugate base is for that compound. CH3, CH2, OH. You see how we got that? All we did was remove one acidic proton. Okay? Sometimes you get something that's negative, and sometimes you get something that's neutral. It just depends on what you started at. Okay, the pKa, notice it's a very low number, minus 2.5. Okay? So now, what do you think the form is going to be at pH 5.5? Which is going to be which one? Yes. Okay, hang on. Let me make a... I'm pretty sure I put them all down. See how we got that? Are you with me? Okay. All right. What about this one? This one has a pKa of 11. Okay. So what is going to be the conjugate base? Always, my advice, it's just my advice, you can take it or leave it, is to figure out your two options and then figure out which one it is, okay? So that you know which one to put. So you don't just put some random thing like NH3, okay? Do you see why NH3 is random in this example? Okay. All right, so what is the acidic proton? Which one is acidic? It's going to be one of these, right? All right. So what is going to be the conjugate base for that compound? H3 and H2. Okay. All we're going to do is remove one of those. Okay. We're not worrying about the other two. Okay. That's another pKa value. It's different. Okay, so now our pKa is 11. So what do you think is going to be 
in a solution that has a pH of 5.5. The charged one or the uncharged one? The charged one. Does that make sense? Okay. Did you notice that this one, the pKa, was 15? And that when we protonated it, the pKa jumped down to minus 2.5. Do you notice that? Without even memorizing the numbers. So if you had this one, the pKa of that, it's probably going to be um, more than 11. Okay? It's going to be more than 11. Okay? Remember, all the numbers are relative. Relative. Okay? Okay, now you get to do it. Okay. Let's see how you do. Methanol, the other one was ethanol, ethyl alcohol, the one that you did not drink too much of over the weekend, right? Okay. Because you were all studying. Has a pKa of 15.2. What form will predominate in a solution with a pH of 3.5? <gasps> I gave you two choices, didn't I? Three. I forgot two substitutes. See how you're thinking. Work it like we work the other ones, is my advice. Okay? I'll probably have to write stuff for you. Trying to get you to be very logical. Oh, you know what? I can't have this be the pen. It won't. It won't turn that off. And then I click this over. Look at that. I got every answer except E. <laughs> okay, so which will predominate in a solution with a pH of 3.5, right? I had glare. I couldn't even read it. Okay, so if your compound is this, okay, what is the conjugate base? Okay, what was the deal? In order to be present in the base form, the pH has to be more or less than the pKa. What? More. more. Right? What? Okay, I may have said it different than I wrote it on the other slide. Okay, so everybody see that? So in order for this to win, the pH has to be more than 15.2. Okay, now, what about this? What do you think about that? I didn't give you that pKa, did, did I? 
Well, but can you infer anything about that PKE? It might be negative. It might be negative. Because I don't know exactly what the number is, but it's probably negative, okay? And so what that means is who wins? That's the winner. How'd you do? Okay. Okay. So there's the homework. Practice that. It will help. Now, why do we even talk about this? Okay. Well, a couple of things. A lot of times when you're trying to figure out a mechanism, you have to decide if things are protonated or not protonated. Okay, do they have that H plus added to them or do they not? And a lot of that has to do with pH. The other thing is, have you heard of amino acids? Have you heard of amino acids like glutamic acid? Okay, arginine. Okay, those are types of amino acids. Aspartic acid, that's another one that's pretty popular. Um, it's in the realm of the 21. Um, those are amino acids that have a side chain that is going to be an acid or a base, okay? One of the things that you will do when you take biochemistry is you will take, I think, <laughs> a protein and bust it up into its constituent amino acids, and then you put it in some kind of a buffer that's going to be a specific pH, and you're going to sort them. Okay, you sort them by their charge, and you need to know if they're going to be protonated or not protonated. Which form are they going to be in? Okay, that's where you're going to really use it. Okay, you might do that in biology also in cell and molecular. Okay, did you do, did anybody take cell and molecular yet? I have. You're in it? Are you going to do that? We already took a quiz already. Oh, okay, so you had to learn your structures. Yeah, we didn't learn structures, we just learned their... Their codes? Their, uh, their charges, like if they're... Positive, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then their okay. like, abbreviations. I do have a okay. question, though. Do we just assume that the compound that we're given is in this acidic form? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I wouldn't give you this and say what the pKa is. Okay? Because it's going to be like 60 or higher. Okay? that make sense? Because that's minus, okay? Yes. And we, you can do PKBs, but we don't. We tend to just do PKAs and everybody talks about the protons, okay? Okay? Anything else? Okay, because we're going to talk about old Lewis, okay? Pretty much when we do acid-base reactions, we're going to be talking about transferring a proton, boron to the Lowry. However, sometimes Lewis comes into play. We'll say this is a Lewis acid, okay? Lewis acids are electron pair acceptors, acid acceptor for Lewis, okay? Now, Bronsted Lowry was protons, Arrhenius was H plus and OH minus, Lewis is electrons, okay? So when, you, when I say draw a Lewis structure, what do you have to show? All the electrons, okay? So that's how you could remember. Lewis has to do with electrons, okay? For some reason, Bronsted Lowry and Lewis are the two people who get mixed up all the time, okay? Base is a donor. Okay, now how can you remember that um, an acid is an electron pair acceptor versus a donor, okay? Well, do you remember I told you that HCl was an acid in every definition, okay? HCl is an acid in every, all three of the definitions. So if you took this, okay, and you dissolve it, what do you get? A2 plus, okay, we're not going to worry about the H3O plus right now. Okay, so you get H plus. What will H plus do? Will it donate electrons or accept them? 
it will accept them, right? Because it is positive, okay? If you have NaOH, the base is OH, what? Minus, okay? Is hydroxide ion going to donate an electron pair or accept an electron pair? Well, it's negative. So it's going to donate an electron pair. It already has high electron density. This one has low electron density. You see that? So, so it's really highly logical, negative to positive, negative to positive, okay? If you're giving an electron pair. Okay, now we have an example, of course. Is that, is that on your little slide? Okay. This is an example of a Lewis acid base reaction that cannot be Bronson Lowry or Arrhenius, okay? It's just totally weird, okay? You'll notice that the two compounds that we're using are very inorganic, okay? All right, so here is ammonia and here is BF3. If you look at boron on the periodic table, can you tell me how many um, valence electrons it has? Boron. How many valence electrons does boron have? Three. three. Okay. And you'll see that it has three bonds. There's one electron, each one of those bonds to those little fluorines. Okay. But I thought there was like a little rule called the octet rule. That's why this reaction occurs, okay? The nitrogen over here in ammonia has an octet, but when it gives its lone pair to the boron, it gets an octet also, okay? But it is negatively charged. That is the um, product of that reaction, okay? Like I said, it's weird. Okay. We refer to Lewis bases or electron pair donors as nucleophiles. Nucleophiles. So what does file mean, Greek scholars? <laughs> loving. Have you ever heard that? File is loving, P-H-I-L-E. If you didn't know that, that's okay. So a nucleophile is nucleus loving. Okay? So it wants to give its electrons to something else. We call BF3 in this reaction the electrophile. That means it loves what? Electrons, okay? So that's why they react. You have a nucleophile and an electrophile, okay? So if I have, oh, oh, I don't want to do that. All right, hang on. Let's see if I can get this to go back. Okay, so if I can get this to be a pen, all right, and I'm going to have HO minus plus H plus, what do you get? Who? H O H, right? Who is the nucleophile? Hmm? The OH minus, specifically one of the electron pairs on that oxygen. This is the nucleophile. Okay, so what does that make H plus? Electron loving. So it is the electrophile. I guess I kind of like my little table there. Okay, now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to draw the arrow for the reaction. You start at high electron density and go to low. So I'm going to start at the negative and I'm going to go to the H plus. Okay, now do that on the top one. Where am I going to start? Right, and I'm going to go to the boron. 
okay? Those little red lone pairs are in that little bond between the N and the B, okay? So my electrons, I pick these. It doesn't matter which ones you use. They're all the same. There they are. They're in that bond. Okay, is that making sense? Nucleophile, electrophile. We'll keep using those terms. Oh my gosh, it's a tough Monday. Okay, dipole moments. Let's go through dipole moments fast. It's a measure of how polar a molecule is. The molecule has a dipole moment when the centers of positive and negative charge do not coincide. It means they're not in the same place. This side of the molecule is more positive, this side is more negative. We saw that when we took ethanol and we put fluorine in place of the hydrogen. That changed that. Okay? They get expressed in something called a Debye unit. It's a capital D. I know like virtually zero of them in my brain, okay? But what you need to be able to do is figure out who's more polar than who, okay? All right, so here they're coinciding, here they're not. It's just like a little nutty picture. I was like, okay, I'll use it. It came with the book. Nonpolar, polar. That's what we're going to look for. Okay? How are we going to decide if something is nonpolar or polar? Well, first we're going to look at the bonds. Then we're going to look at how the bonds are arranged in the molecule, which is the geometry. Okay? Okay. Here are um, some bonds and their dipole moments. Okay, just for the bond. So you'll notice that um, an HF bond has a dipole moment of 1.7. Okay, a CF bond is 1.6. So who's more polar, a CO bond or a CN bond? CO is more polar than a CN bond. Okay, how about OH versus, o versus NH? Who is more polar, an OH bond or an NH bond? OH. OH is more polar. Okay? So you can use that till you get, but you'll get a feel for it real fast because we'll be talking about it all the time. Okay? What you're going to want to do is be able to pick out the polar bonds in a molecule because that's where the exciting reactions are going to be taking place is at those polar bonds. Okay? So have you ever learned... Um, about the structure of glucose. I think glucose, that's the most basic sugar, right? Glucose. Do you know that glucose has a whole lot of OHs on it? Okay, has a whole lot of them. All right, that's where all the reactions occur to use glucose in your body to get energy from it. It's going to be reacting at those OHs. Okay, so deciding if you have a dipole moment is you take a vector sum of the individual bond dipoles. I got two minutes, I'm using them. Okay, it's dependent on the bond polarity and the angles. Okay, lone pairs contribute. Okay, so here is chloromethane. Okay, I, this is pic these pictures are trying to show you 3D. Okay, the carbon here is sp3 hybridized. Agree? What is the geometry of that carbon? Tetrahedral. Okay, in here they draw a little bitty um, of those arrows for the CH bonds, but you can kind of just ignore those and just look at the polar bonds. There's one polar bond. It's going to be polarized to the chlorine. This has a, a dipole moment of 1.9, the whole molecule. Okay? Here's one that has three chlorines. Okay? But you'll notice that its dipole moment is only one. What's different about this one and this one? Yeah, that one has one chlorine. That has three chlorines. But what are they doing? They're canceling each other out. Okay? It's like if I pull 
to the left and I pull to the right, where does the pen move? It doesn't move, does it? It's like the vectors are canceling out. And when you look at carbon tetrachloride, notice that the dipole moment is zero, okay? Because they're all canceling each other out. And then this is just one with two bromines on it, okay? Okay? They get you going on that. It's kind of a weird topic. All right. I'll see you all on Wednesday. Have fun in lab. What are you doing? Are you doing the nutmeg lab? Oh, that's a good lab. You'll like that. You get a lot of crystals and they recrystallize. Yeah, that's good.